it is an incredible honor and a privilege to serve Jesus with men and women like you. I'm overwhelmed every time I walk into this place and I look around and I see people lifting their hands and worship to Jesus and the cry of my heart is, Father, just do it again. Just do it again. Won't you use whatever you want to just do it again? And we're going to share this morning out of God's word. But before we do, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, you are our Father. And we are your children. And this is your word. Won't you make your word alive within us today in Jesus' name? Amen. 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 Our text this morning, friends, comes from Romans, Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. It's 27, and you can uh, turn there in your, in your Bibles, on your iPhones and iPads, or you can just follow on the screen. And I'm going to read from the NIV this morning, the 1984 translation. And uh, in laying a foundation for this morning, I couldn't but recall Christian's preach of last week. He preached so, he preached so practically and so well on, on, on justification, on sanctification, and on glorification. And he used the analogy of a GPS. And he said the starting point is where you input your, 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 your point where you start. And in the Christian faith, where we start is justification. Just as if I've never sinned. That is the moment Rome, that Romans 8 verse 1 becomes reality in our lives. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And for some of you, that was 10 years ago or 15 years ago or 20 years ago. For some of you, it was when Jackie went through the waters of baptism. Or for some of you, it's now this morning. And then Christians said, there's glorification. And glorification is the end. It is something that is secure. It is where our hope is. It is where Romans 8 verse 11 or 8 verse double 1 as I call it. It starts with 8 verse 1. It ends with 8 verse double 1 which says when I exhale my last breath here and I close my eyes, he who raised, the, uh, he who raised Jesus from the, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also raise your mortal body from the dead because the Spirit of God is in you. And we will be with God our Father, Jesus Christ our Savior, and the Holy Spirit our Helper for eternity. That is secure. That is our hope. But friends, we walk here today, and that is what we call sanctification. In this route, between the beginning and between the end, We're on this route and we follow this voice and sometimes we go off track and then like Raw says, the Holy Spirit is faithful and he reminds us of what Jesus has done and he brings us back and he says, no, look up, that's your hope and that is where we're going to dwell a bit this morning. Is that all right? That is where we're going to dwell. We need help, friends. We need help. Let us read Romans 8. Verse 26 and 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who, raised, and he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints, who is us, in accordance with God's will. If you remember nothing this morning, friends, just remember this one thing. We have got help. The Holy Spirit is here to help us. If that's all you remember, it is enough from this morning. He helps us. Let's read it again. And as I read it, some words stood out to me. Did you ever read God's word and some words just jump out of you? And, and in this first, just this first section, in the same way, some of your translations might say likewise. In the same way, the Spirit helps us. So in the same way stood out, helps us stood out, and weakness stood out. 
The Spirit helps us in what? In our weakness. So we've got to understand what is that. And we've got to look at how He helps us. He helps us the same as or in the same way. What is that? You know what Rory taught us? That Scripture always clarifies Scripture. We don't have to do guesswork, friends. Just go and look what went before. If you read therefore, in the same way, likewise, something explains that. Let's look at that this morning. Let's go back, a little bit back to verse 18 to verse 25. And it says this, Paul writes of hope. And it's some, some way he says to us, listen man, I, I want to get it into your hearts. I want to get it into your minds. He says this about hope. And remember, friends, our hope is in what is secure, eh? Who puts his hope in what is not secure? My car is not secure. Jesus Christ is secure. Glorification is secure. And he writes this, verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings, difficulties, and some of us are weak in dealing with our sufferings, are not worth comparing with, uh, with the glory that will be revealed in us, which is hope. There's suffering, there's hope. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. Hope, it will happen. For the creation was subject to frustration. Why? Because we separated from God and I get frustrated and sometimes I'm weak in dealing with my frustration. But there's hope. Thank you, Ro. <laughs> Not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. In hope that, uh, uh, that the uh, that the creation itself will be liberated. we frustrated, but there will be a time where we were liberated from its bondage and decay. I don't know about you, but this body is in a state of decay. My face goes. Uh, in, uh, in Afrikaans, we say, my borskas wordt hankas. <laughs> And, and nothing can change that. There's a time that Botox won't even keep everything in place. Everything is in decay. But friends, there's hope. There's hope. And brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. There's going to be a time where I'm free from this body, where I get a glorified body that will not decay. Yo. We know that, that the whole creation has been groaning, groaning uh, as in pains. Pain is difficult, friends. Some of you go through pain to, this morning. And you say, Eugene, I don't know where to turn to you in the right place. You came to the church. You came to Jesus. I don't know what's your pain. I don't know why you're here this morning all the way from wherever you came. But Jesus knows your pain. Of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we, e uh, as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons. Hope, friends. The redemption of our bodies. Hope. Then Paul says this. In this hope you were saved. That is why the gospel is good news. Because it's hope. It brings hope, friends. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he, has already, he already has? But we hope for what we do not have. We limited, we lack things, but we wait for it patiently. There's hope. The point is this, friends. The point is this. By using the words in the same way, Paul is saying, in the same way that hopes sustains us during difficult times, in our difficulties, so the Holy Spirit will help us in our, uh, in our weaknesses. That's the connotation. There's always difficulty, but there's always hope. There's always weakness, but there's always the Holy Spirit that helps us. Sure. He says, doesn't matter what you face, there's hope, there's help. Sure. Sure. I think Paul was a lot more serious about the Holy Spirit and the help of the Holy Spirit than what we realize. You know, in the book of Romans, 35 times Paul refers to the Holy Spirit. 
and 18 of those 35 times are in this chapter, chapter 8. And, and, and we've heard Raw taught us that if God says something once, you must listen. If he says it twice, you better pay attention. If he says it 18 times, friends, I think God says, get it. Amen. Get it. Amen. My Holy Spirit is with you. Amen. Yo. Let's look at, we're just going to look briefly at a couple of scriptures. We're not going to dwell too long here. Um, we're going to... Uh, we're going to just look at a couple of scriptures where the Holy Spirit helps us. And it's in this chapter. Romans 8 verse 6. The Spirit gives life and peace. Um, we can't give life. Romans 8 verse 11. 8 verse double 1 as we read. God will raise you from the dead by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Romans 8 verse 14. The Spirit leads us. Why? Because we're sons of God. Romans 8 verse 15, the Spirit brings us into intimacy with the Father, and by Him we cry, Abba, Abba. Father, Abba, Father. Father. Sure. Amen. Romans 8 verse 16, the Spirit gives us assurance of salvation. He testifies with my Spirit that we are sons of God. And verse 23, we've, we've just read it. The Spirit is the foretaste and the guarantee for our final redemption. We will be redeemed. There'll be a redemption of our bodies one day. And after all of this, it's like Paul is saying, friends, the Holy Spirit doesn't stop there. There is more. There is more. And then Paul goes on and he says, now the Holy Spirit um, helps us and he intercedes for us. He doesn't only help us, but he intercedes for us. You see, Raw said early on, he said, um, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And there's a moment with Stephen that he was standing. And I believe, as Raw said, when we get saved, Jesus is standing but at this moment, he's seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us. And Paul is saying, Jesus is interceding for us. The Holy Spirit is interceding for us from within us. You've got all the help you need. Sure. Let's read it again. Paul tells us, first of all, how the Holy Spirit uh, intercedes for us. And secondly, what the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So my first point was, the Holy Spirit helps us. My second point is, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Let's read it. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans. That is the how that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for all the saints in accordance with God's will. This is what he intercedes for us. So that, that first portion of how he intercedes for us, it's, it's basically he intercedes for us in a way, friends, that blows our minds that we cannot comprehend. It's at, an, it's at a completely different level. Completely. I want to illustrate it with a story. My dad. Oh, my, my, my dad was pastoring a little church in Kumati Puert. I think today it's called Gateway. And uh, he called me one day. He said, Eugene, let's break this big pulpit down. And we built a little stage about one step high. And we packed out all the instrument, and because there's the only instrument not in the Bible is an organ, we threw the organ out and we put the piano and the keyboards and the guitars and everything on the stage. And then he looked back, he stood back and he, he looked at the stage and he, he said to me, My boy, we need a drum kit. And I, yeah, Dad. And he put me in the car. I'll never forget it. He put me in the car, we drove 500 kilometers to Joburg, we bought a seven-piece drum kit, and we drew, drove 500 kilometers back. <clears throat> and we put the drum kit on the stage, and he looked at me, he said, I need a drummer. I said, Dad, I don't know how to play. <laughs> Woo! 
12 years old, friends. <laughs> and I'll never forget. I went and I sat behind those drums. All I knew was a little bit that I watched my friends and they showed me in there, but I knew nothing about drums. And I would sit behind those drums and as I look up, there was a little balcony and my dad's desk and his office was on the right side of the balcony and I could see from where I was sitting in the drums, I could see his office. And I sat behind the drums and as I started playing, I saw my dad walking up the stairs and he sat behind his desk and he sat like this and I thought he was praying, oh Jesus, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> that's what the first couple of shots sounded like but then I prayed and I said Lord let me get the beat right my dad would sit behind his desk and lift his hands and he said Father God fill him with your Holy Spirit and I would play and I'd say Lord let, me, let my foot just be solid on the bass and he would lift his hands and he would stand behind his desk and he would say Father God just lavish him with your love and your grace and your kindness and your joy. And I would play and I would get, go, get on the cymbal. I go, taka, 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 the rudiment and God help me and let me be solid and all these things. And he would pray, Father God, just help him to worship you. And more, than, more often than not, friends, when I practiced and my dad prayed, I ended up speaking in tongues and worshiping in tongues and praising God. And sometimes I just sat there for an hour or so just crying and sobbing because I felt the, the love and the kindness and the favor of God the Father over my life. And I, prayed, I played drums for about 30 years, friends. And you know what? I saw people getting healed. I saw people getting filled with the Holy Spirit. I get, saw people getting saved. I saw people getting redeemed and set free because my dad interceded for me while I was playing. Yo. Friends, you know what, friends? The Holy Spirit intercedes for us way beyond we can understand. My limited mind was so focused on what I had to do. Sometimes the Holy Spirit says, just worship. Just worship. That is the will of my Father. This will be taken care of. Just worship. Your friends, as I played, my dad prayed and it changed my life. We got a lot more to share on this, but... There's one more point, one last point I want to leave with us this morning. The Holy Spirit knows God's will. The Holy Spirit knows God's will. That's why his interceding is sometimes different than mine. He knows God's will. And he intercedes according to God's will. Point number three. Let's read verse 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to God's will. I don't know about you, but sometimes we pray and things play out differently. And, and then we're limited. We don't understand. And then we don't know why. And my last story, I remember in 1989, after, after three months of, after being diagnosed with cancer, after three months, my dad passed away. He had cancer for three months, and then he passed away. And the, the morning that he passed away, friends, I'll never forget that. You know, at the time, my mom was 37. My dad was 40. My brother, which, who leads the church in Oz at this time, he was only 13. I was 17. And my sister, who I love dearly, she's in Transkai at the moment. She was only nine. And I, I will never forget, we prayed, oh, how we prayed that God will heal him. We've prayed, friends. 
just like you might be praying and maybe just like you've prayed and things didn't turn out like you wanted it to turn out. I've prayed Psalm 91. How many times? But he still passed away. And, and that morning, I remember he held my hand. He couldn't speak anymore. The day he passed away, that morning, I was standing next to his bed. And as I wanted to go, I just feel this, <laughs> this gentle squeeze on my hand. And I know he couldn't speak, but I know that he was praying. I know it because I knew my dad. And when my dad passed away, he left a will. And in that will, he left enough for, for us to finish schooling and my, uh, to finish studies. And he left enough. And my, my mom is taken care of until this day because of what my dad left in his will. We didn't understand his death. We didn't understand it. But there was hope. And even though my dad left an earthly will, he left me with a will that sustains me for the rest of my life because he introduced me to the will of my Father God. And he said to me, that will is secure. And that will is Romans 12 verse 2. God's will is good pleasing in, and perfect doesn't matter what you go through doesn't matter what you face doesn't matter what situation you're in God's will never change never never change friends I know some of your stories and it pains my heart and I don't know why we don't have answers but one thing we do know is that God is faithful, the Holy Spirit is here, and He helps us. He intercedes for us, and He makes all things, verse 28, He makes all things, good or bad, He makes all things work to good for those who love Him and have been called according to His purpose. I close with this. The Spirit helps us. We're never alone. The Spirit intercedes for us even when we do not have words. The Spirit knows God's will. We're in safe hands. Amen.